For the very latest on the situation in Cairo tonight, we're joined now by CNN reporter Ian Lee. And Ian, it's been another day of violence. What's the latest where you are this evening? Well, we still have uh, gunfire echoing through this city. There's a fire raging uh, in central Cairo. You still have supporters of the ousted President Mohamed Morsi still in the street. The military has issued a firm warning tonight. The curfew that just went into effect about 45 minutes ago, saying that anyone who's caught out in, during the curfew can be thrown into jail, into, into prison. And that is one of the strongest warnings we've heard uh, for anyone who breaks curfew. They're trying to end this, uh, the, the clashes, the violence tonight, trying to get those people off the streets. But this really is a battle for Egypt's identity. On one side, you have the Muslim Brotherhood, who has won what they believe legitimacy through parliament, winning parliamentary elections, presidential elections, and then having their constitution passed. On the other side, you have the interim government who claims their legitimacy through June 30th's massive protests when we saw millions of people take to the streets. Both sides believe they're in the right. Both sides are digging in their heels. OK, Ian Lee, thank you very much for your thoughts tonight. Well, let's get the views now of the former British ambassador to America, Sir Christopher Mayer, who's live in our Westminster studios tonight. And Sir Christopher, thank you very much for your time this evening. What do you make of the violent scenes we're witnessing in Egypt? Well, I think the Egyptian army is going to continue to grind down the Muslim Brotherhood, particularly in the big cities of Egypt, above all in Cairo. And we are going to see a fair amount of further bloodshed um, before this is brought to any kind of uh, resolution. But as the CNN correspondent said, neither side is prepared to back down. The Egyptian army has invested far too much in this in blood, apart from anything else in getting on top of the Muslim brother Brotherhood. And as they have begun, so they will continue until some kind of peace is uh, brought to the country. And a desperate situation with, if we boil it down to the most basic thing, one Egyptian security force being ordered to shoot their own citizens. Well, that is, that is the case. But uh, the Egyptian military, and particularly uh, Mr. al-Sisi, who is a seems to be the de facto dictator of Egypt, has decided that from his point of view, the stakes are so high that uh, his own forces should be allowed to shoot fellow Egyptian citizens. We can deplore this as much as we like. We can condemn it as much as we like. And we have done. And the United Nations will be saying things and the European Union will be saying things. But I do believe very strongly that none of these statements of condemnation and appeals for restraint on both sides, one should add, is going to make any difference at all to the situation on the ground. And, and of course, in situations like this, many people look to the United States for directions. With your experience as former ambassador to that country, what do you think is happening behind closed doors now? Well, I think the Obama administration has had an agonized debate about what it ought to do. There are conflicting streams of opinion. On the one hand, Egypt as a nation is unbelievably important to the United States because it is one of the ways in which uh, that particular frontier of Israel is guaranteed against attack uh, from Egypt or from uh, infiltrators coming in from, the, from Sinai, where you have the Egyptian-Israeli border. So that is one thing which is extremely important for the Americans. It is also very important for the Americans that Egypt should be a stable country because it is one of the most important uh, in the Middle East. On the other hand, you have all the human rights considerations, the democratic argument, which is very powerfully uh, evoked uh, as well. In the end, I think that the Obama uh, team has come out probably with something like the right response. Because if you put all these interests together and decide what you're going to do, the first and last questions are always, what effect will this have? Okay. And as I said to you before, I don't think anything the Americans do is going to change the situation on the ground. And we're just two and a half years since the, the, you know, the Arab Spring and the country was ecstatic then. How long is it going to take, Sir Christopher, to get the country stable in its new form? Well, who knows? Who knows? It took over 700 years for the United Kingdom to move from the Magna Carta in 1215 to the full emancipation of women in the 1920s. So maybe we should not be measuring this in matters of years, two years, five years. Maybe this is a very long process which Egyptian society needs to go through before it comes to some kind of resolution. So, Christopher, thank you very much for your thoughts tonight.